In these examples, I want to show you how derivative causality um, can pop up in the causality assignment and then different ways of dealing with it. Um, won't completely derive the um, system equations, but we'll try to um, show you the path that you might take to uh, formulate the complete equations on, on your own. So take this example here of a simple RC uh, C filter system. Uh, let's just right away look at the causality and uh, indicate how ca uh, derivative causality pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, apply the effort from this voltage source and uh, now we've got a, into a one junction, so remember we don't have to apply any causality here because we can have many, as many efforts on the one. We need to decide which is determining the flow. Um, we would, would not uh, apply a flow with a C here uh, by indicating effort in because that is not preferred causality. Um, we we uh, can go to either one of these energy storage elements. There's no other sources. And uh, we always want to apply integral causality first. So let's go ahead and do that um, uh, on this bond here. Integral causality on the C. So let's go ahead and number these. So one, two, three, um, four, and five. So voltage two and charge two is one of our states, right? So at this point, I have two energy storage elements. I might have two states, but as you can see by putting two efforts here, this bond now has to impose flow back to this one junction, which means this, this C ends up having forced derivative causality, right? There's no choice there because I have to have both of these bonds determining flow into this zero because bond three here already determined effort okay um, so the flow here flow four is equal to the rate of change of the charge four and this is voltage four that's being determined in here from basically v3 right which is so v3 which is the voltage on bond three here okay and uh, this, let's call this, uh, sorry, this is, oh, that's a current. I'm keeping that general, but that really is the current here. So I'm going to say I4. And this is I5, right? And this is V5. So let's go ahead and call this R5. This is C4, C2. And let's go ahead and call this, you know, just source. All right, so because this is um, dependent, Q4 is not a state. This is independent. And so I have a first order system, Q2, n equals 1. Now, let's look and see how that impacts writing our equation, since we only have one state Q2, I want to direct myself to find the state equation for Q2. You know, we haven't really in, um, at least in, you know, we haven't um, expressed any output equations, but let's say at the end of the day, what we want to know is, you know, what is the voltage across uh, this capacitor, which, as indicated here, that's V4. So maybe you know our output equation that we seek is going to be, you know, what is we also want to know what is V4. So I want to know what's the output here given some some input voltage Vs here. Okay. So I want to know what is this output equation. And we'll find that at the end. We'll write that equation as a function of state, which is Q2 and input. But first, let's find our state equation Q. Dot two. What is that? Well, again, it's the rate relation here, which is equal to I2. Now, what is I2? Well, I2 is the current, you know, through capa this capacitor, 
but as you can see it's it's the current is being causally determined by which bond look at look at look at look at this one junction and i2 the the current here is determined by which bond it, it's got you see this causality here says uh the the current here is determined by i3 so write it causally right so i3 so now I need to find I3 and how what is I3? Well, okay now I3 comes from again read the causality here. I3 is the sum of I5 and I4. I guarantee you if you learn to write the equations by reading the causality it saves you so many steps in the algebra. So now you're directed to find I4 and I5. Let's find I5 first because that's going to be a little easier. I can guarantee you because it's just going to come from this resistor, right? So I5 is 1 over, because I have a linear resistor here, V5. Okay, well, what is V5? V5 is the voltage causally coming up from here, which comes from V3, right? So 1 over R5. You can write as many steps as you want, but you can see now V3 is equal to the difference between Vs of t less V2. And I like that because V2 is a function of state, right? So basically, you can see that I reduced this unknown V3 into input and state. I can throw that right into here. I can find I5, and then I found one of the terms in I3, okay? And you can back substitute, and you'd be able to write that one. Now, I also need to find I4, and here's where we're going to run into a problem. How do I know that? Because I4 is coming from my dependent element, and I4 is equal to Q.4. Well, what is Q.4? Well, what is Q4? Q4... Remember, remember when we talked about derivative causality, you have to invert your constitutive relation? Well, Q4 is equal to what? It's, it's C4, and it's a nice linear relation, times V4, right? I know V4, I multiply by the capacitance, so I know V4, and look what happens. V4 now is equal to what? V4 is equal to V3, isn't it? So... V3 we already found as Vs of t minus 1 over C2 times Q2, right? V3 is coming from this step here. So I have Q4, and then I have to take the derivative. So what, what ends up happening is I4, as you can see, is going to, is going to be written as C4 over C2 with a minus sign in front of it times uh, you know, Q2 but I need to take the derivative right I'm substituting taking the derivative uh, plus uh, C4 and note the derivative of the input usually don't like this but that's what's happening in this system so once I have I4 I can substitute that into here I have I3 and note what's going to happen is you're going to have Q2, and on the right-hand side, you're going to have another Q.2. You're going to have to move that term over to the left-hand side, collect the terms, and then solve for... So basically, I'm not going to do those steps, but substitute and solve for Q.2, and then you're done. It's those extra steps, those... The, the fact that you have this derivative that comes up on the right-hand side of the equation that you started looking for, that for simple problems like this, algebraically uh, uh, not too difficult. Imagine now if you have multiple dependent elements, it may become a little bit more tricky. And uh, believe me, these do can, uh, present a little bit more algebra. Note, we were able to do it pretty much in a single page here. Right? And again, by using causality, you 
in my opinion, have a much more directed solution uh, or derivation, rather, of the uh, state equation. Okay, so that we haven't found V4. Well, actually, we have found V4 because what V4 is when this output equation causally it's equal to V3, which we found as a function of state and input. And there's my output equation. Okay, so I'd have my state equation, proper substitution, and my output equation. Let's draw the bond graph for this uh, system, and um, I'm going to try to do it in such a way that uh, you can see that a derivative causality can pop up. We've got a pressure source coming into a line here. If this is a f incompressible fluid, like a hydraulic fluid, I'm indicating that I, I want to put some inertia in here, some fluid resistance. I'm going to go ahead and model it just with a linear value, assume that it's laminar. It, it, that really doesn't have any bearing on whether we have a derivative causality or not. I'm looking again at examples here on derivative causality. Um, I'm going to assume it's incompressible and then I've got transformation here right into uh, translational motion. So I've got a flow here, it's common to these elements, and then I'm going to need a transformer right to convert from fluid to mechanical and then I've got a me simple mechanical system with damping and spring elements and I've got a mass there. So start off here with a ideal pressure source coming in and then because that I and R have common a common flow here, I put those on a one junction. And that flow comes into here. Again, if I have no compliance of the fluid, and I'm going to assume there's no leakage, then that goes right into right a transformer with some indicated um, modulus. So this velocity here is the velocity of the piston. This flow here is, is basically the effective flow rate into this piston here, right? That's what I'm relating here, right? We know that, that the velocity of the piston has to be what the flow rate divided by the area of the piston, right? So the modulus is going to be 1 over A sub P, or A P to the minus 1, if I write it this way, right? Okay, so then um, I have another one junction here, and already I've talked about T transformers coupling, so you should already begin to see that if you haven't seen it from the schematic that the inertia of that flu is going to be coupled to the mass inertia and as soon as you draw the bond graph I hope you can see that as well when we sign causality we'll certainly prove that and then I'm going to say I've got some you know I want to ignore any friction here there, there probably is some friction there that's not going to hurt us to put that there you know some seal friction and then um, but it's also going to be because this side of the damper and the spring are grounded, the same velocity, oh, this is the velocity of the piston. All those have the same velocity, so they're all on this one junction. So, you know, this R here could be this damper, spring, and then there could be also be some resistance here for uh, the seal, if you like. If you wanted to add that on there. So where does the... Um, where does the uh, derivative causality pop up? Well, let's go ahead and apply causality. Got an effort in. I'm going to go ahead and um, I can either assign integral causality you know, to this I. There's no other sources, so got this I here, I got this I here, and a C here. I have three energy storage elements, so I can start anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and start with this C if I wanted. No impact on the one. So I, I can now look for another energy storage element. This means, right by the way, that is x dot of the spring, say, is my first state. And um, I can choose, let's say I wanted the, the motion of the piston to be a state, so 
uh, I would give this integral causality here, which means that P dot the translational momentum of the piston P sub P is the state. Now once I do that, now the flow is known here, which means the rest of these bonds have to indicate effort. Now look, that flow translates across that transformer, which means flows come into here, and now that flow is known here, and so that means that this pressure coming, this inertial pressure, uh, is equal to what the rate of change of the momentum, okay, of the fluid, right? So. Because it's dependent, gamma f, this is the momentum of this fluid mass here, is not, not a state. Okay? So what's going to happen then when you go and write your equations, right? x dot k is easy because you're just going to say, okay, the state for, equation for x dot k is just the velocity of that spring, which is the velocity on this one junction, which is the velocity of the piston, right? And that's just 1 over the mass of the piston times, if I choose P sub P as my state. Some people like to go ahead and use velocity. You could do that, and then you'd, this would be your state. And you use velocity as a state or momentum as a state. Okay? Um, now when you go and write your state equation for the momentum of the piston, you now need to find p sub p dot p, which remember is m p v dot p. So you could then choose, I want v dot p as my state equation, then you have to divide by m sub p. But now you need the sum of those forces on here, right? And here's this force right here, the force of the piston, okay? These forces, force from the seal friction, force from the spring, which is easy, right? F k is k times x of k, and that's a state. So that force is easy. And then you've got another fb, which is the from the damper. Depends on the velocity of the damper, which is the velocity of the piston. So these forces are easy. It's this f sub p here that's a problem child. So write, write that equation out. It's f p minus f b minus f k minus uh, this F here, which is, a, say, a seal. So again, I'll assume you can find these three to finish those out, but it's this guy that's a problem. And when you look at it, see, look at the causality. Fp is equal to whatever this pressure is here. Um, Fp is equal to what? A P times the pressure P sub P and that's the that's this effort that's coming from here and it's it's the sum of these efforts right and so you better be able to write that A sub P P sub P is equal to P S of T I didn't have an S on there but this is my source minus P F, and that's this guy here, minus P R, say. Okay, so again, this one here, you, the way you find this one is it's equal to gamma dot uh, sub F. And what is gamma sub F? Well, gamma sub F is equal to I sub F times Q F. Q is basically QP, which is related to VP, and then you need to take its derivative and solve uh, for your final state equation from there, right? And I'll let you finish that.